Um, again, I could wax lyrical for quite a long time on this, so I'll try not to. Um, but Chris and I first moved up to the Thetford area uh, 25 years ago, thereabouts, um, because of the forest. We lived in Brighton. Uh, we had amassed six huskies, which at the time seemed quite a lot of dogs. Uh, we have six dogs again now, but in the meantime, we, had, we went up to 26. Uh, and when you go for your evening walk, which I hope you'll all go on, because uh, it will be good, but when you go on your evening walk, there is every chance that you will actually overhear uh, the sound of a 30-dog husky dog kennel, which is just over that way. Um, so the Thetford has become a mecca for sled dog training, and that is about the, the sandy soil. It's about the fact that it is a perfect place for husky training uh, and for racing. Very popular when we hold races here. Um, and as I say, we moved, we moved from the beaches of Brighton, which have stones all over them, so you can't actually run a team on them, even if it was legal to do so. Uh, it, and uh, we moved up here solely because of Thetford Forest. Um, and sorry. Right. Oh, got it wrong. That's it. Um, so this was our pack a few years back. Um, there, are, they are all purebred Siberian Huskies. There's the old rescue in there as well that aren't quite as purebred, but who cares? As long as the dogs want to run, that's what's important. Um, but here. Uh, I guess sledding and dry land husky racing, as it is known, so using wheels rather than sleds, uh, has become mainly the sport that uh, we all view as being the main sport within the forest. But Canny Cross, uh, which is uh, running, basically running with your dog, is a fast growing sport as well. Uh, very straightforward, very simple. You put your dog in a body harness and you have it on a line and it runs ahead of you. So very simple for just about anybody with any dog. Uh, cycling with your dog, bike your ring. Um, so cycling is really with the dog running alongside you, bike your ring pulling ahead of you. So there is a slight difference. Uh, scootering, I've even taken part in scootering, it's quite a hairy sport, but basically you're on a scooter and the dog is pulling you, and when you get to a corner you pray that you'll get round it in hand, because you're only on two wheels. Um, but also bloodhounds and working trials, so areas for all sorts of outdoor dog activities are very much coveted by dog people who are, or people with dogs, who are into sports of all sorts. Um, and finally, agility and field trials, they're, they're more specialised, maybe less suited to uh, forest areas, but again, people that want to have areas that they can take their dogs and do things. Um, certainly for things like working trials, I know when people have a, a dog that they want to take part in working trials, there are very few areas that they can go out and simply set up a trail and send their dog on a scent exercise. Where do you go? Forest is ideal because it's free access. Um, how much they get diverted by other smells, I don't know, but they are certainly, this is the sort of area that they love to come to. Uh, so, which dogs? So, said dogs, mainly for us. Um, and the reason we've been quite fussy over the years as to which dogs we use in our sport, uh, we've limited it to the four sled, uh, accepted sled dog breeds, so Siberian Huskies, Alaskan Malamutes, uh, Eskimo Dogs, also known as Canadian uh, Eskimo Dogs, and um, the Salamoyed. Uh, because most people view those as being accepted as wanting to run in harness. There are other people out there doing other things, and if you've ever watched the Iditarod, which is a famous cross-Alaska uh, sled dog race, at one time they did allow all sorts into the race, including teams of standard poodles, which will pull in harness, but they don't have the coat for it, and the dogs would have to be peeled off the ice in the morning, so there's a serious welfare consideration there. 
So we've stuck to the main sled dog breeds because we're very conscious that this is a small country, everybody watches everything that everybody else is doing, and you will soon have somebody telling the RSPCA that you're doing something cruel to your Labrador, even though your Labrador's actually quite happy to go out and pull in harness, it may be, uh, and you can have huskies that don't actually want to pull in harness. But, but they are accepted dogs for that sport, so it is much simpler for us to defend that um, because the dogs love it than it is to start into other breeds of dog. Um, hounds, I've got hounds up there, they're not hounds at all. People, in, particularly in Europe, uh, have crossbred gun dog breeds, they call them hounds, but they're not, they're gun dog breeds. Things like the German Shorthead Pointer uh, with Huskies, they make a really fast sled dog that doesn't listen to you, but they go very quickly. Um, so, uh, personally not keen, but people do race them and they do very well, but you have to have races where they're accepted because we don't accept them in the races that I take part in. Collies, collies can do everything, we know that. Um, but they, they are great for taking part in working trials, agility and so on, so lots of dogs that take part in those. And other breeds, all other breeds can take part in this type of event or canny cross and so on, so very much accepted and people love simply being able to get their dogs out of the forest, attached to them and running ahead. Uh, this is... No, sorry, again. Uh, the law. The law says that you cannot take a dog in harness on the road uh, or on public areas other than in proper off-street areas like the forest. And the reason for that is very simple. Uh, in years gone by, they stuck a dog in harness and they made it pull. So people would be uh, using their dogs to, uh, to pull carts and take loads around the streets and so on. It was considered cruel, probably was. Um, in many cases, and so the dog, it was banned to put dogs in harness and make them pull loads around the street. So you may see people, the odd nutter, who is out there because they've got nowhere else to go, and, they, and we did it. We did it in Brighton, we did it along the seafront. Uh, but it is actually against the law, we wouldn't do it now. Um, so if you're going to the forest or you're going onto anybody else's land, then you do need permission. <coughs> Here we're very fortunate, we have 45 permits, uh, and that group uh, waxes and wanes, it certainly never goes below 45, uh, but obviously people come to the end of the time in their time in dogs, or they move uh, and somebody else gets a permit. So Nikki has the divine job of managing a waiting list of people going, when is my permit coming up? Um, <coughs> suitable surfaces, as I've said before, this is an ideal area for uh, sled dog training because it's sandy, the dogs don't hurt their feet uh, and when it comes to areas like, and I'm, I'm, I don't mean to bad mouth areas because there are some fabulous areas of land, but even somewhere like Kielder, we used to go up there and race um, and it was not great because if you're on snow it's fine, but if you were on bare land then it's very much tougher on the dog's feet because mainly it's stone. So you end up with dogs that have nails worn through. You certainly won't want to train there. You might do the odd race because it's short, sharp, over. Um, and the dogs love it wherever they are. Uh, but for regular two, three times a week, maybe four times a week training, this sort of area is perfect because it drains well as well. So no mud. Um, and obviously there are other users that we have to think about. Um, and that is a serious consideration for us. It's also a serious consideration for the forestry. And we recognise that. So we have specific times of day when we can go out training. Uh, and we stick to those. We're pretty good at making sure that we follow the rules. And that gives us access to areas even when uh, the harvesters are in, um, providing that piece of kit isn't out there, uh, we are allowed really to continue training in any area as long as we uh, recognise the signs and don't go into the areas where they're actually working. We rarely get blocked out of one of our four areas. Aren't we lucky that we are very lucky to have permits for this area? Um, so, how our teams are trained, and I'll just go into this very 
very quickly. Um, we have leaders. They are trained to lead. Um, they are trained to, to turn. So when we come to a corner, we don't have reins. We simply give them a command and they turn. They've learned that from each other. So your young dogs start at the back of the team, work their way forward, and they learn simply from experience that G means to turn right, and Corp means to turn left. If you get them mixed up, you get in a mess. And OK means to go straight on. And they all learn it very quickly. Um, but they're learning it because we've taught it to them uh, from having a couple of dogs that we taught well, and then the others learned from them. Um, the chasing squirrels is the bit that they're not supposed to do rather than the bit that we teach them to do. So a squirrel goes across under the noses of your leaders and the dogs just run on by, in theory. Uh, mostly they do, actually, but that's because we have taught them that they have to leave squirrels alone. Uh, and keeping quiet. Um, our dogs are quiet most of the time. We try to keep quiet as well because they're quite noisy when they set off and those of you that are coming out tomorrow morning will hear that. But once you leave, then everything's silent. So we are out there, uh, and actually if it wasn't for the fact that we're using an ATV, you wouldn't really even know we're there. Um, distance and team size, all of these things, surfaces, they're very important in terms of daytime temperature. We try to uh, keep our temperature, sorry, we try to run at the coolest time of the day. That happily coincides with the fact that the forest is quiet first thing in the morning. Um, and uh, ATV versus rig. I've put that in there, and again tomorrow morning for those of you coming out, it's a great opportunity to find out why we use the ATV. But it is so good in terms of the amount of control we have. We have total control over the team, they can't get away from us. We can break, we can stop, we can get off, we can sort out a confusion if there's a tangle. We can do anything with that team, and they are so much safer than rigs. Rigs are a dangerous piece of kit but they're great for racing, so it's as light as it can be, um, but it, you don't have the level of control that you have with an ATV. And you never use the ATV except if it's got a team harnessed in front of it, so it's not like you're racing around the forest having a great time you know, jumping over things and so on, because that is all we're interested in, is the team. Oh, safety. People have moved up here, uh, or moved to Thetford, have done so. They've, they've moved house, they've made a huge commitment in terms of all the equipment that they're buying, in terms of caring for their dogs, and so on. To us, having this permit of being able to run our dogs in the forest is just so key uh, that our whole lifestyle would change without that. Oh, number of dogs, yes, yeah, sorry, but we do tend to grow them. Um, but the new sports... Bike yawing, scootering, cycling, canny cross, agility, field trials, and so on. This, this is really the biggest of the new sports, canny cross. Uh, so many people can take part so easily, and it's now become uh, competitive as well. There are quite a number of events that are held throughout the forest here um, on a regular basis. Uh, but I will just make the point that our dogs are our pets before they're anything else. This is a typical scene in the kitchen at home in the evening. Uh, we go for year-round fitness. Our dogs are trained all year round. Um, so the number of times we can get them out and keep them conditioned and so on. These dogs, are, are, many of them are no longer with us, but this dog is 15 years old at now and he is as fit as he ever was. He doesn't run in harness anymore. Um, but he's that fit and he's that old because he has run for his whole life. So our relationship with our dogs and the fact that we are consistent in the way that we manage them, the relationship we have with them is very, very close. And it's all about the fact that we run them. When you go into a race, you're competing with your dogs. You've got a six-dog team in front of you. And the power that you have there is absolutely enormous. You can easily break your shoulder collarbone, if normal enough. And all of those sort of considerations all dependent on that team doing what you want them to do. Uh, and just to finish on, this is what happens when you're not in Thetford Forest. So racing, racing in Sherwood. Nice place, but uh, muddy. And that's it. <laughs>